When you hear of disturbing websites, you might think of planecrashinfo.com, shaystjohn.net, or even ratemyoo.com. Though in this video we'll be talking about more lesser known disturbing websites from across the internet. As always, timestamps will be in the description below. In December of 2017, people online began sharing images of flyers posted up around Los Angeles and St. Louis of an old blank-faced woman standing next to a man sitting in a bathtub filled with milk. The poster is titled, Bathe in My Milk, with further descriptions listed underneath. Offer open to men only, soy, almond, or traditional, use my sponge, I will watch you. To me, this just sounds like another Tuesday afternoon. When you follow the link posted on the bottom of the poster, it takes you to bathinmymilk.com. On the website, you are greeted with even more pictures of different naked men sitting in the same bathtub. These pictures are both extremely creepy and hilarious at the same time. An old lady dressed in a white gown with men chilling in a tub filled with milk, all taking place in an old, dim, and dirty bathroom, with everyone involved having an expressionless face. There is also a rope quite clearly laid out on the ground. In one of the images, the old woman isn't standing next to the man, but rather peering in through the window. Anyone else think these pictures could be an album cover? Anyways, people online began to yap, as they always do. Some who found it more disturbing theorized that the woman is a serial killer who forces her victims to bathe in milk? Others who found it more funny didn't think much of the whole thing believing it was just a joke. So which is it? A killer taking pictures of her victims or some bizarre joke? Well the answer would be found pretty much instantly. At the bottom of bathinmymilk.com it reads, if interested, please email me right away, including an embedded link, which back in 2017 took you to a Facebook page, but now it takes you to the Patreon of Alan Wagner, who would turn out to be the creator of this whole thing. Alan is a comedian who makes random goofy online content like skits and other things. He decided to make this whole thing as a joke or prank, Alan built that dingy looking bathroom set which wasn't an actual bathroom. Then he hired strangers and some of his friends to take pictures in the tub filled with milk. After the whole thing, when people would mail letters to the woman who they suspected was actually running Bathe in My Milk, Alan actually forwarded the mail letters to one of his friends who had no idea. He just randomly opened his mail one day and read stacks and stacks of letters asking to bathe in my milk. So in the end, bathinmymilk.com was just a prank, albeit a pretty damn weird one. When you search up sentimentalcorp.com and click on the first link, you are greeted with a photo of two people watching TV with the word nothing presented on the screen. There are five creepy looking GIFs playing at the top of the page, which are all actually clickable. The first one showing a close up of a woman's eyes takes you to a page with pictures of AI generated politicians in disturbing situations. Some include gore and nudity, so I won't show all of these images. Each picture has a caption under it with political ramblings to match them. On the top left of the page, you'll notice it says Eyes of Randy Prozac, who seems to be the creator of this whole website. There are three more images at the bottom of the page that bring you to videos of, well, take a look. Get a job and pick out a wife and have two kids and live the good life.
The second GIF on the homepage of SentimentalCorp.com takes you to a page titled Systems Death Recordings, filled with links of various titles and dates that range from this year, 2024, to 1987. Each link brings you to recordings of songs, if you could even call it that. Lyrics are also presented below with an image or cover for the songs. Moving on, the third link, which might be my favorite of the five, takes you to Paradise Dreams, a place to go f your socks. There are three images of Mark Zuckerberg smiling with sausages edited in his mouth. Like the first page, the pictures of Mark Zuckerberg are all clickable. They lead you to a page with treatments 1 to 8. Each treatment is an old and definitely dated animation fully voice acted out. Here are some of those. Okay, I see you brought your friend Felipe with you. So what does he do? I am a professional wiener gobbler, senor. I'll do anything you want with the hamster tube and everything. No way, Dad. This is cool. It's my new Matrix look. It's cool like in the Matrix. Check it out. That movie was a piece of shit. Made for <laughs> What do I teach you? The next GIF link gets way more disturbing, bringing you to the Shrine of Goat Worship. Now I'm no religious scholar, but I'm pretty sure that goat is supposed to symbolize the devil. There are links titled Shrine 1, 2, and 3 that bring you to altars of even more disturbing videos. The first one starts with Ronald McDonald straight up bullying you, before it cuts to a video of a guy in a bathtub cutting off off, you know what. Now I am definitely not showing that part, even if I'm almost positive it's fake. Nonetheless, here's part of the video. No meaning. You have no understanding of how small you are. You have no understanding of who I am, where I am from. Believing only what you see is real, not knowing that you are merely puppets. The fifth and final GIF leads you to Paradise Dreams 2030. On the page, it wastes no time in showing you the links that take you to more videos, this time under Viruses 1 through 8. The videos are the same old styled animations that you'd see on YouTube over 15 years ago. The name and person I mentioned earlier, Randy Prozac, seems to be the creator of all of this. He's been doing this kind of stuff since the 1980s, so he's probably very old by now. Randy even has an IMDB page where he is credited as director of some of the videos. Nothing really concrete is known about Randy Prozac, though SentimentalCorp.com is most likely either an art project or a place to vent out random thoughts, including his religious, political, and societal beliefs in rather unorthodox ways. Whatever it is, the website is definitely strange and extremely creepy. Plampo.com is a French website that has been running since 1996. When you first click on the website, you are greeted with big text reading anti-copyright board and a picture of a kilt measurement on the bottom right. When you click on board, it takes you to a page of changing seemingly random text, always mentioning a she, crediting an F madre. On the right, it reads become a member, which after many clicks eventually reads out a full name, Frederic Madre. Going back to the homepage under the kilt image, there is another link that takes you to this page, with pictures of people standing behind a gated fence. There are also three drawn figures of people in robes added along the top half of the screen. When you look closer at the background image, which is duplicated, it reads Yedim Dasaina, 
a German translation of an old Latin phrase that means to each his own or to each what he deserves. This same phrase was displayed during World War II among various Nazi concentration camps. The image in the background of that page is of survivors behind the main gates of the Buchenwald concentration camp in Weimar, Germany. I have no idea what the purpose of the drawings are, nor what this image serves in the grand scheme of this website, so let's move on. Searching through planpo.com, you'll find a vast array of even more links. One of them eventually takes you to a blue screen with text reading, and then there was call MSN. Roughly 10 seconds later, an image of a weird dude shows up. He's wearing a shirt that reads, Hi, my name is blank. If I am lost, call the milk lady? I don't know, it just cuts off. When you click on Call MSN, it pops up a French chat log with a Frédéric and other names seen elsewhere on this site. Another page on this website is of Jules, a Japanese kid who writes about his little sister, Mamiko. Now I'm not gonna read all of it, as it's just basic facts about her, which seems kind of random to be located on a website like planpo.com. Jules describes themselves as a musician, photographer, and artist. When you reverse image search the picture on the letter, it only has one result. An encyclopedia page discussing Japanese children's rooms. The written letter made by Jules is on here, word for word. Except there's no mention of a Jules anywhere. Jules is a real person, so why did they use this post on this page? Well, this whole thing is just an obscure art project. The name Frederic Madre, whom I've mentioned previously, is seen all across planpo.com. When you search up Frederic Madre, the first result takes you to a page that talks more about him. Apparently, he is an artist known for his spam art projects and he resides in France. In 1996, he created planpo.com and has continued to add on to it over the past 28 years. Regardless of it being an art project, planpo.com is still extremely interesting, so I figured I should still include it in this video. Unlike the other websites, DeepCave.com requires a bit of context. Dave Shaw was an Australian pilot and cave diver. He was a family man whose main occupation was being a pilot for Cathay Pacific Airlines, though he also enjoyed cave diving from time to time. In 2004, he broke multiple records diving at Bushman's Hole in South Africa. It was on this dive where he would first discover the body of Dion Dreyer, a man who had passed away while diving almost a decade earlier. The body was 270 meters down, or 890 feet, which for reference is slightly shorter than the height of the Eiffel Tower. Not long after returning from this dive, Dave Shaw created his website, deepcave.com. Be warned, I am a rank amateur when it comes to website design and don't have the time or the plans to improve. One day soon, I will pay someone to do a proper job and then it might be worth looking at. The rest of this site describes his own life and how he became a diver. Depth in a dive is of secondary importance to Dave. He is primarily interested in exploring. To be where no other man has explored before is the ultimate in his opinion. It seems that to achieve that goal, greater depths are becoming a must. Only a month or two later, Dave Shaw would return to Bushman's Hole where he had first found the body of Dion Dreyer. He came back with the intention of returning Dreyer's body to his family. Dave knew it wouldn't be easy carrying a body from nearly 900 feet deep back to the surface. Armed with a body camera and his usual diving equipment, Dave took the plunge back into Bushman's hole, though unfortunately and unbeknownst to him, it would be his last. 
everything was going well. Dave made it to Dreyer's body and was starting to set up the retrieval process, trying to put Dreyer's body in the body bag he had brought down with him. During this, Dave got entangled in his distance or cave line, a long rope used by divers to find their way back to the surface. With the physical exertion of putting Dreyer's body in a bag, trying to untangle himself in rope, and other breathing problems caused by ever-growing pressure, Dave Shaw would pass away. A good friend of his, Don Shirley, was there underwater about 150 feet above Shaw at a rendezvous point, waiting for any response from Dave. Time had passed and he knew something went wrong, so he decided to dive down further himself to look for his friend. Shirley had never been this far down before, so it was a big risk. He soon saw Dave motionless in his diving light, assuming the worst had happened. Though Shirley's arm monitor for displaying oxygen levels cracked, and he knew that if he stayed down there for any longer, he and Dave would share the same fate. So Shirley began his return to the surface. While he decompressed about 20 feet underwater, Shirley returned a note to the surface written on a diving slate, Dave not coming back. Three days later, Dave Shaw and Dion Dreyer's bodies were finally recovered. Don Shirley suffered permanent damages from the dive, including balance issues after nearly dying from going that far down, not to mention losing his best friend. Twenty years have passed and DeepCave.com still exists, a website created by Dave Shaw who only a month or two after its creation would pass away, displaying the ever-growing interest, ambition, and courage Dave had when it came to diving. The page has remained untouched since late 2004, and it serves as a stark reminder that your life can all change in an instant.